Hey guys, welcome back. This one's going to be about a Stairs 3085, 3080 series and a very, very common problem. So let's take a look at the lock detecting micro switches and what it can do to make your life miserable. So the symptom is you walk up to a table and even though the brakes are down, it shows flashing on the unlock. You hit the floor lock button, you hit lock and it reverts immediately back to unlock. What do you do? Well, the first thing that I do, you can see that I have a strap that goes up and over the table, goes to each side. And what you do is you lower the table down to its lowest elevation and then you put the clamps on and then raise the table straight up and that will raise the shroud. You can see how I got it floating right here. The culprit is going to usually be these micro switches located right here and right here. Either the clips will be off, they'll be loose or like this time the micro switch was actually smashed and you can see the micro switch right there. So what happens on this table is when you press floor lock and lock, it presses in on the shackle, which extends the foot down. And then you can see right there, there is an adjustment for when it makes contact with the micro switch. And you can see what I had to do on this side because I don't have that particular thread I put a cap head screw on this side and it's performing the exact same function. And you can see it actually repaired the problem because now I show lock right there. So let's go into it and see what else causes this problem and why was my micro switch smashed. So I'm going to hit floor lock, unlock. You can see it raised the foot. And I want you guys to notice, I know I'm not wearing gloves, we'll live with it. I'll wash my hands immediately after. You see how this foot is just floating around like that? Well, that's not good. That means that it's not being retained. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw that guy down as far as it can go while it's unlocked. There we go, it's making contact with the floor right now. You can see how much thread is sticking out on the stud. And you can see I have my handy dandy hammer that everybody likes to make fun of. But what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this brake effortlessly using this hammer. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the table. So I place my hammer underneath the crest of the weighted base. And now. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. And you notice that the table is now floating. What this does is it gives me the ability to get a little bit of extra range out of these guys so that I can put them in a natural position and lock them the way that they should be. I'm going to put it all the way down. And you guys know I'm going to use my favorite component, Loctite. Let's put some Loctite on there. And I'm not talking about a little bit of Loctite. We're going to put a lot of Loctite on there because this brake does not need to be flopping around the breeze like that. Let's go ahead and screw it up to where it needs to be. Pretty close to right there. And to help hold it. I'm going to use this, which is hot glue, regular hot glue. You guys might not know this, but I do like me some hot glue. And take a look at this little guy. This is my portable torch. I think I've talked about it in another video. You see the flame right there? Use this for helping with fasteners that have Loctite on them. Use it for maybe some shrink too. And you also use it for hot glue. So what I'm going to do 
is before I screw this guy all the way up, I'm gonna heat up some hot glue. I'm gonna place it in the very introductory threads. And uh, then while it's still hot, I'm gonna thread it back up. And that will lock the foot permanently in the place and at least give the Loctite a little bit of time to cure. All right, once you have the foot into the, its natural position, it's adjusted correctly. I keep this guy around on me. This happens so often, I'm just gonna keep it on me. And I am going to place this guy right here under the foot. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can have my hammer back someday. Because currently, uh, when I lower this guy down, it's still gonna be on my hammer. I want it back. So that's what this guy's for. The reason I use a chisel is because it's a small footprint and it's much easier with its taper to pull it out after the table is down. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. I got my hammer back. I got my chisel back. And there we go. One more time for good luck. I've got good and even fertile rise on both sides. I am showing green on lock, which means both my lock switches are now correct. The wiring's on. I just have to zip tie it down here and here to keep its profile low, and that is how you resolve the flashing light of the unlock on Steris 3085 tables. Hey guys, before I leave you, I just wanna make one more statement just to let you guys know, if you are ever working on surgical tables, not only should you always wear gloves, which I do, but always lock the table before you walk away. Always. It doesn't matter if it was unlocked when you walked up to it or not, Always lock the surgical table before you walk away from it because what they might do and what they probably will do is they will wheel a patient in there and they will not check to see whether or not the table has been locked. And what that does is uh, when they go to roll them from one station to the next, the patient will put weight against the surgical table and it will roll away and the patient will fall on the floor and they might blame you. I know, it might not be your fault, but it doesn't matter. For patient safety, Always lock the surgical table when you leave it in a surgical room, okay? All right, guys, that is all I have for you. I know, uh, this is a drag, and any of you that have worked on these stairs 3085, you already know what I was going to talk about as soon as I mentioned the flashy light. I hope you guys have a good weekend.